flying cars have long been the topic of science fiction. Well, now the future is here. This is called a Vertiport. Now, it's like an airport, but instead of planes, they house flying taxis and cargo drones. There's already a port in the UK with several other countries right now planning their own. As we do with all things future focus, we've brought in futurist Nicholas Badminton. Uh, I'm fascinated to know what you think about this. The sites for Verda Ports are planned in the US already. They're yeah. also in South Korea, France, Germany, Australia, many others. What makes what we just showed everybody, that Verda Port, different than an airport? I, it, it's just really the, the square footage that exists on it. The, okay. the idea of these, these uh, these advanced air mobility of flying cars is the fact that they can they can take off and they can land in very small spaces. They could potentially take commuters or, or goods or whatever across cities really quickly, easily. But I don't think it's quite the future. Oh, why not? So we shouldn't have you here. Well, <laughs> so so uh, I've done lots of projects with people on and like trying to validate this, work it out. Um, it's what we call a solution without a problem to solve. Hmm. It's like an additive thing. It's like we need another form of transportation. It's not going to be used for commuter traffic because if you think about it, it's gonna, you're going to have to have thousands of them in the air to be able to be used for commuters. So that's out of the question. It might be interesting for emergency services. It might be interesting for goods. Some of these big grandiose... Uh, uh, ideas of hundreds of these being in cities all over the world. I think it's a little bit of an overreach on what's really needed. Interesting. Yeah, several companies we know are involved in this race to roll out flying taxis. They've even, like, floated launching it by next year. Yeah. So what kinds of visions are they bringing to the table that would be you? So you mentioned cargo. Yeah. Um, there, there, there's some ideas. Uh, I think in Chicago they're looking at ideas around you can literally get onto one of these uh, these AAMs and that you can fly to the airport really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, there's there's sort of dissonances in terms of getting to that vertiport versus just jumping on transportation that's already available. It doesn't make sense when you look at the uh, the math around some of these. Well, in countries like Paris, for example, are talking about having flying taxis to help sure. with the traffic during the Olympics. You know, yeah. So so the, the Olympics is really interesting because we. we know that there are gimmicks in the Olympics. It's kind of like an expo situation. That's right, yeah. It's like, here's new tech, this is interesting. And hey, I'm all for experimenting with these new kinds and, and forms of transportation. But people are really pushing this agenda of like, this is some version of the future. Whereas I think <laughs> that, you know, people getting on bikes or walking or better public transportation that's affordable is way more important than what could be quite a costly endeavor to jump in one of these AAMs. So it's interesting that you call it a solution in search of a problem because it can actually create more problems. In the UK, they're looking at making a, what they're calling a drone superhighway. Yeah. What do you think of that? I've been following that for some time. I think it's fantastic. Um, and it's primarily going to be used for goods. So it's down in the south of England. I think it's about 180 miles or so. And, and it's really cool. I've been, I've been presenting it to clients for, for quite a bit of time. I think the logistics and the cargo side of this is fascinating. I think it's absolutely going to be there because it solves a problem. Yeah. It solves a problem for fast delivery of goods when it's needed the most. So we're watching some of this graphic here. Will it run sort of above the regular highways? Where What kind of space will it take So, so they're, they're, they're sort of looking at it to like run to the side of the highways. So and sometimes highways. In, the, in the middle lane. There's still the worry that these could drop out of the sky. They're, oh, they're, they're, well, that's a big worry. <laughs> <laughs> but you still have to go through the diligence. These are incredibly noisy. They take up airspace. This is why it's going to be really tough in city contexts. We're not going to have hundreds of them above our heads. It's going to be noisy. I mean, we're already living in a pretty noisy place, right? Yeah. So it, it's interesting. So uh, I think the drone highways are really interesting. Logistics, I think, absolutely. But I don't necessarily think it's going to be these big flying vehicles that people are pitching. Right. But there's lots of companies out there raising a lot of money and there's a lot of buzz. Hmm. And no one knows the answer to what comes next for them. But I'm skeptical in certain circumstances ah. and I'm optimistic from a logistics perspective. This from the man who cheers on AI. OK, yeah. thanks so much, Nicholas. Always great to have you here. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.